Hello guys, welcome back, and we are going to continue from where we left off. However, this is going to be a quick tutorial, and the aim is to make our button interactive. So if you've noticed so far, you realize that our button has no effect. So as you can see, when we scroll on it, nothing really happened. And also, if we try to fill in this, and we enter something, and we click on our button, nothing happens as well, and yeah, that's something we need to fix. So after clicking on our button, it looks like we have an issue. So reading data of undefined. So let's take a look at what this is. So coming back to the network, let's make the request again. All right, so it looks like our server is down and as a result of that, we got that error. However, that should not be the response we get. We shouldn't be trying to read the data of something that does not exist. So yeah, I think we have a quite easy way to handle that. Let's come back into our code. Let's come back into the auth service. And here we are trying to get the data on a response. However, we should only try to get that data if the response itself exists. So one way we can check is we can have if not error dot response. Then we want to throw network error this time around because the reason why we would not have a response is if there's a network error. So network error, please try again later. Okay. And also we can do the same thing for the register, but that won't be an issue. I think we already achieved the aim of handling that. Okay. So if we want to do the same thing for the register, it makes sense to just abstract this whole error handling path into a function. And maybe we can do that. So maybe we can have error handler, which is going to take in error. So again, I think we've still not got any angle of this. Oh, okay. This came in here now, but we didn't get it the other time. So let's work with that for now and see what happens. So, yep. So this is exactly what we want to do here. However, there's no response within type error. Actually, this error should be of Azure's error. Okay. So now we should have this. And this is complaining because um, according to Azure's error, we don't have data or anything defined. We can extend the Azure's error. So let's try to extend the Azure's error. So we can have type custom error. Probably want to put it in our types file later on. Equals to Azure's error. And um, so we want to extend the, the response as we can see. So now instead of using easiest error, we can use the custom error and the response data and everything should be there. So that makes more sense. So now we can come here. So we have the error here. So instead of doing this, we can just have error handler into this. We copy the same thing for the register as well. Cool. So this is much more cleaner. So we have an error. Oh, okay. So there's a structure and as a result of that, it's uh, affecting the way things are laid out. So I can move this out just to ensure that the structure is still maintained and paste this here. Yep. So the interference we add between these two has been removed and we still have our functionality in place. So let's try our operation again and see if things are working now. All right, so now we have that fixed, which makes sense. So back to the order of the day. So the aim is to have this button interactive. And the first thing we can try is to have an over effect. So let's see that in action. Coming back into our code. Um, coming back into the auth.html, which our body resides. So here we're going to give it a class of loading. Yeah, that's going to be for future case of handling loading states. That's not a big deal. However, we want to add an over effect to this button itself. And we did remember we styled it within our style.scss. So coming back here, before we get to the over effect itself, we can have a transition effect. So the transition effect, it all, so it affects all, then it happens within 0 0.3 seconds, then it's at its effect. Then finally, we can have and over. And all we want to do here is just make the blue color a little bit darker just to show that effect. Yep. 
So I believe BG Blue 900 should be okay. This is our over effect. And now we can come back to our browser, check this out. Okay, so that's achieved. So the next one we want to do is to have the loading effect. So whenever we click on our button, we should have a loading state telling the user that the button has been clicked. Then also we should disable the button such that we can double click it while operation is going on. Okay, so let's go back to that. And we already added a loading state to our odd.html. However, another thing I want to add is a span. I want to put the button test within a span. That way, when we have the loading class in place, which is going to be controlled by states anyways, so we're going to expose a variable within our alt component such that the login, the register can control the loading states, okay? So yeah, this is going to be um, a variable controlled part later on. But for now, yeah, let's just style it how it's going to be. So we have the button test within a span, and now we can come here, and here we can have and dot loading so when it's loading i want this span within button to be removed so span equals to display none okay so whenever it's loading the span will be display none and we can verify this by coming here so this is not loading any longer so another thing i want to fix is since there's no test here you can see that the whole thing has collapsed so let's change the button from being a py to a height value and just to confirm that everything is still working in place i'm going to remove the display um, we set here just to see that the test is still aligned well so i'm going to remove this and change this to 12. okay so on back here and looks like the test is still aligned well which looks good so now we can come back to the code and enforce our display none cool so another thing I want to set for the rounded is a relative position. Or better still, since that is kind of applicable mainly to the loading, I'm going to set it on the loading side. So I'm going to apply cursor not allowed. So this should be at applied. So it means when we are loading, the cursor will be not allowed. Then I want the position to be a relative position. And now we can have an after here. So and after it give us an idea already and we have an absolute yeah we don't need this let's remove all this so for the after we're going to have a width of four a height of four a border of two then a border transparency then a border top of two that way we just have a shell at the top then we have a border top of white or let's say gray 200 okay so let's see what this looks like so far okay so this is what we are creating we're coming back here let's have it a rounded full then let's have um the left position to be 50 percent and that's one over two then top to be one over two as well that's 50 percent so let's see what this looks like. So this is what this looks like. So finally, we can translate things to put this at the center. So we come back here. We have translates X into minus 50%. Then translates Y to be minus 50% as well. Cool. Oh, okay, I think we did the wrong thing. So this should be minus translate as well as this. Let's verify it. So now it looks like it's at the center. So finally, we can add an animation to this. And for this, we can quickly come down. And here we can create an animation. So here we can have add keyframes. And here we want to have a spin. Gives us an idea already. And based on the spin, we can add animate spin to it. Okay. So this is kind of predefined by Tailwind. However, we are using this particular keyframe spin we've defined. So we can come back to our browser, check this out, and it's rolling here. So the reason why it's rolling here is that when we define the animation, it's only considered the rotation. 
on the transform site. However, our definition here included the translate, which we didn't include here. So better still, we can remove the translate from here and define it on the spin side. So here we can have translate minus 50%, comma minus 50%. So here we are saying it should always stay on this translation while it rotates. So the same thing we can do that for this as well. So let's confirm. All right, so that looks like we have our loading states, which looks good. So also, as you can see, disabled. Nice. So now we can come back to our code and kind of join things together. So coming back to the auth.html, yeah, we can leave this here. However, we can come here and define another input field. So let's add it to the existing ones. So we have at input. And we want to have a loading state, which by default is false. So now with this defined, we can come here and control what class is defined. So here we can put our class within a square bracket, and that allows us to perform a ternary operation here. So this is our variable, and we can say if loading states, or rather we should have a loading value here, if the variable is loading like that. So if you come back to our browser, nothing should be happening because it's not loading. So now let's actually make that work. So coming back into our code, we've defined the variable, we've set it up here. And now if we come back to our login, we can also define another variable here and have this as loading, which is equals to false by default. And whenever we try to submit, we can set the loading to be true. So here we can say this.loading is true. And once we are done with everything, we can have this.loading to be false. Cool. So now back to the HTML, this now takes in an extra parameter called loading. So since this is not a string type, we have to put this in the square brackets. Okay. So now our value has been defined. Let's test this and see if it's actually working. So coming back to the browser, fill in our value. Okay, as you can see, we get the loading effect. And once this is done, we have everything back to normal. So let's quickly set this up for the sign up as well. So come here, just copy most of what we have here. So loading is false by default. Whenever we try to perform an operation, this dot loading equals to true. Then this dot loading equals to false. All right, so let's test for sign up as well. So we didn't get any effect because we've not passed the variable around. Let's quickly do that. Come back here as well. Here we're going to have the loading equals to loading. Let's check it out again. All right, so now we have the loading effect and yep, we have this as well. So that's all I have in this episode. And this is a quick detour to kind of clean things up ahead of the plan dashboard uh, implementation. So we are still going to have that soon, probably in the next one because I can't say anything we have to clean up again. So see you in that one and bye for now.